Good morning everyone. Welcome to my studio here in Connecticut. I'm Alan James and this is Series 1 Watercolor Secrets Part 3. Uh, I'm enjoying a nice uh, cup of espresso here to get things started. A little jump start maybe. Anyway, in the first two uh, parts we talked about making skies, water, and uh, we put uh, a silhouette of a cityscape in the background. And this week, Part 3, this month, I should say, part three, we're going to be putting in the docks, some figures, some boats, some waves to finish up the painting. And now let me show you what I did this morning, uh, just before we film this. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have some pencil marks. That's a boat. We have a dock, some figures, and the dock comes out off the side of the paper. Now, that might be hard to see right now, but we'll try to zoom in on that later. So. What we're going to do is work with what we call dry brush technique. What does that mean? Dry brush technique is simply just taking, um, minimalizing the water and there's more pigment to water ratio on the brush and the paper is very dry. When we make a stroke we just zip right across and create a symbol that represents one of those things we talked about. And that's what really watercolor paper is, is a collection of symbols to represent things. For instance, the dock is going to be maybe two uh, horizontal lines and a bunch of vertical lines representing the post, and you have one try at it. If you do it more than once, you try coloring it in like when you're a kid, you're going to muck it up. It's going to be all muddy and lose its uh, clarity. And we don't want that to happen. Um, so the techniques we're talking about again is dry brush. We worked with the last, for the first two parts, we worked with wet on wet. What does that mean? We have a wet paper, we have um, pigment in our brush, and we let the pigment absorb into the wet paper. Now we can either use just water or we can use tinted water, whatever the case may be for what you're trying to achieve. So these are some of the watercolor secrets uh, that we're going to discuss this month, which is April of 2014. And so without any further delay, let's get started on this. And we're going to finish up this painting today. Check it out. Welcome everyone to my watercolor secret series. This is part three. We're going to, um, if you can see here, I made some pencil marks of a dock, some figures on the dock, fishing, and some boats. Okay? Now, if you don't have any drawing skills, I suggest you you work on your drawing skills to learn how to do these. these. They're not hard to do once you learn the techniques. And I just saw something here that I want to just help myself out. There's a boat over here. I want to just kind of give my idea of where I'm going to replace the reflections or the shadows of the boats. You know, I've got all kinds of things here. So here, if you see, this is the do a dock going horizontally and then coming out of the picture here. And some, I put some posts in here and some figures in here. And this is the horizon. So you want the figure's head to be about where the horizon is, okay? So this is, these are little fishing boats. And here they are in here. And we're going to use dry brush technique on the fishing boats today. So um, I like to take, if you can see this or not, I like to take this after I squeeze the little tubes in here of uh, paint, I like to wet them down with this nice spray can and so a uh, spray bottle. So what we're going to do, uh, and the colors we're going to use today are, we want dark colors to represent the dock, and they're just going to be quick brush strokes. So the, the, usually what I like to use, and again I'm going to use the same colors that we use for the most of the picture. So I'm going to use French Ultramarine, I'm going to use um, this is burnt sienna, and I'm going to use yellow ochre, and maybe some alizarin crimson. Uh, I may put some of this nice turquoise in the boats to add attraction to it. But right now the main thing I want to do is the big lines. Okay, so I'm going to work first on the dock, representing the dock. And then some of these masts out here, I might put a boat or two way out in the distance, and again, where you to, to create the distance ones, we're going to use what? We're going to use violet. So let's mix some colors up. I have some 
already pre-mixed for the last time right here on my palette this is French ultramarine right here that I'm dipping in okay then I have uh, a little burnt sand in there mm -hmm. this is creating a gray color okay I like alizarin crimson it adds like a, a brilliance to it to it more of a, a sharper violet that I like it's up to you you don't have to use these colors as long as you have the primary colors, which these are, we want uh, blue is, is primary, so any blue that you have, okay, um, and red is primary, so if you have a light red or you have a burnt sienna, which is close, and then yellow, I use either raw sienna or yellow ochre. So I'm going to get a brush about this big, and I'm going to just dip in to these areas here. Uh, for the uh, for the dock and for the dock I need dry brush this uh, that I just mixed is too wet so I'm going to take uh, less water and more pigment I should say again don't forget your towel your paper napkin and I'm going to mix that stronger on this side of here so and watch how I do this dry brush technique so it's more pigment less um water okay and that and i always like to have something to test it out on like a paper plate this is what i had my toast on this morning and that looks good to me all right you see how i did that i just used scrap piece of paper to test it i'm just going to come here and make a horizontal quick stroke you see like that that's going to represent the dot going that way and then over here you can see the lines i'm just going to follow the lines that way quick and you like these this is called dry brush you can see the little sparkles in there okay and now we're gonna make the vertical posts that's easy very easy you see and then maybe the dock extends out this way a little bit you see yeah and this it's that easy folks to make a dock. Now you see how that, how fast I did that? Let me bring that up to you so you can see it. Okay. That's all it is. Now we're going to put the reflections in. That will make it stand out more. Okay, so before I do that, I want to do some other things. Maybe we can do the bolts. I think for uh, this boat here, I'm going to use um, just that gray I made earlier just very light mostly water just to take the white of the paper out I'm just gonna that's a little too much so I'm just gonna take some out with by using my napkin and just put that in there like that now I like that and the other one I'll do similar hmm? there's a boat that's just sticking out over here it's two boats together okay so I'm just gonna put take the white of the paper out and now it doesn't look like much yet, but we'll, we'll, with, when we put the reflections, you'll start to see it pull together on the dock and on the boats. This boat here, again, hmm? we have right there. And again, for the, for the mast of the boat, this boat is a little, we're going to use a nice, just that darker, see, and then and maybe there's another pole here. And some boats over here, maybe I'll put in very lightly with with um, the violet that we like so much. I'm just going to make a, just a shape that might be a boat. And then it's mast maybe. Way out there, you see. There's a boat there. Maybe one here. And one of the secrets you should know about um, when you're painting watercolors is that... When you have boats, you don't want them leaving the picture. You want them to come into the picture because you want to try to draw the eye into the painting, not away. So if we had a, a boat coming out of the picture, leaving, it's going to take the eye that way. Now, we don't want that. Okay? So maybe there's some things going on in here that we can add, like an island. I'm just going to add in here like that. Just a couple of, maybe there's a dock or something out there that we don't know about. So not too much. Now, uh, we have, let's paint the, the uh, 
some put some color into these boats. I'm going to put um, this color here, which is um, turquoise. Uh, you know how boats have that little coloring on the bottom, the bottom of the boat. That's what I'm putting in here. Okay. Both, maybe both of these boats have that. And you see now it's starting to come together. It's pulling together. Um, now I want to make the, the reflection of the boat in the water. So I can use just, um, maybe I use the turquoise. Any kind of blue you have. You kind of want to match it. You want to match it with what's already there. But it's okay. Uh, and now um, a little of this um, burnt sienna with this turquoise creates that kind of murky color that you see in the water. It's kind of a green brown, hard to distinguish what the heck it is, but you can see it here. Now I'm going to go and paint in just the reflections. And again, don't don't get too crazy on me. Just go like follow the shape of the boat and then some waves of the boat. You see? And, you know, like that. You see? Sometimes you get like the, the waves reflect a little and one time is all you have on this, okay? So, and then the poles, the same thing. You just kind of create squiggly marks, you see? Mm -hmm. Same. You see? Just little squiggles, these are the reflections. That's all, you see? This one here, reflections. Reflections from the one in the back. Hmm? Like that, you see? And underneath the dock, we have, hmm? we have shadow underneath. So we'll create the shadow like this. And don't worry about, we're just gonna fill it in. I'm gonna put some of the darker color because it's a little bit darker underneath, yeah, you see? And this is what creates all the fun. Yeah, you put that under there like that. And this is now the boats. It's gonna show the dock, maybe some more shadowing here, huh? like that. And this has to be done fast. Hmm? Okay, so now we have that. And this boat here needs a little shadow. Yeah. And this one has a mast. So we draw little squiggle marks. Yeah. Hmm? That's from the reflection of the mast here. You can see it in the water. Now, what about the water? Maybe the water has uh, waves. So we test and we make maybe just marks, just little like we always did, just wavy marks, like V-shapes. Hmm? Just like that. Hmm? Just a few, not too many, because if you put too many, it gets too busy. And then it looks like a cheap painting, you know? Just a few. And we can change the colors because sometimes the light changes, so we uh, maybe a bigger ones in the front. The bigger ones will be in the front, you know. So there we go. We got just indications. That's what we're going to do. Never state, always indicate. So indicating waves. Maybe some of those waves are blurrier. We can put water down on those waves. Yeah, you see? Ooh, that was that was brave of me, wasn't it? Look at that. What is that? Well, I don't know yet. It looks kind of funny. So we're going to make it darker down here for counterbalance against. This dark, we need some dark over here for counterbalance. Huh? Yeah, you see? There, yeah. and then some more waves, not too many. Some hmm? real quick brush strokes, that's it. Nothing. Um, yeah, is it? Nothing. You don't want to get too busy, okay? Now, that's what we have so far, boats. I can't see these boats here, so we need to do something about that. How do we bring them out? 
Well, I think we're gonna put this boat a little darker in the back. So we can draw out this boat and we're gonna put the line that we always see on the top of the boat. Mm -hmm. And I think we're gonna, um, since I don't like that, I can't see it still, I'm gonna fix it. How do we fix that? Well, we're gonna take this brush, smaller brush, and we're gonna cheat. We're gonna use gouache, or Chinese white in this case. Same, almost the same, not quite. And we're gonna make this boat white. And now you'll see it emerge, you see? Because what is this contrast? We have dark light. Dark boat, light boat. Okay? Dark, dark, white boat. So, when you make a mistake, you can fix it sometimes, you see? So this white boat is standing out more and this white boat will still have the blue on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna put the blue like that, that nice undercoat. And there's gonna always, to, to connect to the water, to make it sit, we're gonna add some dry brush of violet right where the blue of the boat meets the water. We're gonna put a dark line, you see. And that will help it to sit on top of the water, okay? I'm gonna, now we have the reflections in the water, we have the boats. This boat needs a little color. I'm gonna add some color. Um, and we're gonna put blue in that one as well, not too much, just like this. And this, we need shadow on one side more than the other, so we use our violet on this side to darken that side, and now we have more Shadow, hmm, let me see. To make the boat stand out even more. So, I think I'm gonna put, um, I, this boat needs to be connected to the rest of the painting. So we do that by drawing a line. This is the mast of that boat. It connects the dock. It connects the, the, the buildings. Connection, that's another secret, watercolor secret. Connecting things together, crisscrossing them over. When we, when we come over a dark section, we make the mask light color. So I'm gonna use Chinese white for that, right here. See, when it crosses a light section, it's dark. When it crosses a, a dark section, it's light. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting Chinese white right where the buildings are. It will stand out more. You see? And there's going to be um, a reflection on the boats, maybe, on the top. They're nice, okay? And maybe on the top of some of these poles on the side, wherever the light is coming from. The light is coming from the left to right on this painting, I guess. I'm just going to put some reflections on the poles with the old Chinese white, you see? Nothing wrong, still watercolor. And maybe it looks like snow now, though. Mm. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Reflections. Um, there's a part of this boat here I want to fill in um, a dark area. So I'm using the dark violets in here. And that gives it more depth. Hmm? Uh, you see? And this here to make it sit on the water. And now we have these two boats. I'm docking it in some of these areas here. Not too much. It's easy to do too much. But we don't want that. Simple brush strokes to represent what we're trying to represent. Okay. Now you can see this painting has come together. Let's zoom in on this and see I'm going to turn it a little bit. Let's zoom in on this and see what we got. You can see now we have a complete painting. Oh, and you know what I forgot to paint? The figures.
Hold on, let's do the figures. How do we do the figures? Well, let's zoom in. I'm just going to take the figures when I drew them hmm, with the pencil. I just made, for women, it's a triangle like this, upside, uh, you know, with a point on the top. And for men, it's a triangle in the other direction with just an indication of legs by one stroke and a dot near the top. And now over here, I have them fishing. I'm just going to take the smallest brush I have because these are small figures. And I'm going to do this in one stroke. I'm going to just take, and they're in the distance, so what are we going to use again? Violet. Mm, we have right here. His, um, the head is just a small dot. And the body and the leg is just a slash, you see? Fishing pole. Fishing pole. A dot for the lady. She's a little shorter. And that's it. You can see now the silhouettes of the people. And they were just a few brush strokes. Now, because the fishing line crosses into the dark buildings, I'm going to add a little Chinese white right there. Watch. Ah. Right when you have a dark object crossing a dark object, or a light object crossing a dark object, you want to make it white. Huh? So right in this section, just white. And here with her, hers as well. I'm going right into the tube, by the way. Right in there. That's another secret. So now we have the fishing rods. Let's take a look at this ball. No oh, right, right here. Okay. So let's look at this picture again. We have the figures representing people. We have their boats. One red. Hmm. We have three boats. We have boats outside way in the distance. Two boats way out there. Look at that. Reflections in the water. How easy was that? Okay. So that really concludes our Series 1 Watercolor Secrets Part 1, 2, and 3.